Okay, so... I've just been playing this game for like two hours and realize only now that I have not been recording the entire time. Which is a damn shame. So... I'm just gonna walk through... everything that I did before I started playing. So, this is Company of Heroes. Uh... And it looks like... Right. So I... So when I first started up this game, it gave me like a little tutorial thing, and then I went in before doing anything else, including the tutorial, I went into the options, and then I changed a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, like video settings and whatnot. And then what ended up happening was it asked me to restart the game. So I did. And then when I came back in, I didn't have a tutorial again, and it just was a menu. Just showed me a menu. Uh, let me make sure that this is capturing my mouse cursor. I really hope this is capturing my mouse cursor. There we go. Come on. There it is. Okay. Something is going on here. Okay. All right. Good. All right. You see my mouse cursor. Cool. Yeah. So, started. What was it? Yeah. So I I I started out by going in and like reviewing all of the different abilities that the different factions have. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna do that all over again. So, starting out with the U.S. Uh, oh, wait, wait. Something is not... Aha, here we go. Okay. So, for the U.S., got Airborne Battle Group. Call upon deadly airstrikes and airdrop elite infantry to dominate the battlefield. So this has two trees. There's the aerial support, the smoke bombing run, uh, recon loiter... So smoke bombing run this like blocks uh, I would imagine this blocks line of sight uh, and also uh, conceals your units and whatnot. So recon loiter, so this this is like you just gain vision of part of the map because the recon plane is going around, I think. Uh, I haven't I haven't done I any of these trees except for the armored battle group, but I'll get to that in a in a second here. So Supply drop. Pair drops two munitions and two medical supply crates to target location. So I would imagine this is like... You just do that for your infantry squads or whatever to help them out. Pair drop reinforcements. So... Designates a reinforcement loiter over the target area. So I'm guessing that if you have squads in this area, they get reinforced automatically by the pair drop. Uh, dual P-47 Mustang Rocket Strike. So it just blows shit up with rockets. Carpet Bombing Run, same thing. Wide Area Carpet Bombing Run. Okay. So for Paradropped Infantry, here's the Airborne Pathfinders. All current and future scout squads are upgraded to Pathfinders. Now this is interesting to me because I was exclusively playing as the U.S., uh, just to get a feel for the game, and early on you get scout squads, and upgrading them to Pathfinders, I'm guessing that's just a really big boost to them, which is cool. Uh, but yeah, that that's pretty sick. Uh, heavy machine gun paradrop, paradrop sturdy cal, heavy machine gun team to the target location. Paratrooper squad paradrop, paradrops paratrooper squad. And then this is like pair drop M157 mil anti tank gun. So like this tree is just you drop stuff on the battlefield except for except for pathfinders because these the scout squads come out of your HQ building. Um, and it's interesting how they divvy up the buildings. I'll explain that when I get into the game. At least for the U.S. I don't know about the other factions yet. So armored battle group. So, improve your vehicle production, survivability, and performance to keep the war machine moving. So, we've got assault engineers. Bolsters engineer squads with an additional soldier health and improves their offensive power. Interesting. 
So when I was playing before, I made a bunch of engineers because I thought, oh, I need engineers in order to build, like, base buildings, like the tank depot or whatever. But that's not how this works anymore. You build... If you want to build a building, you click on your HQ, and then you... Um, what you end up doing is your HQ has buttons for different buildings, like, I want to build this. And then dudes will just come out of your HQ and build a structure. Which is nice, because then the engineers can go off and do engineer things without having to sit back and build your whole base. So salt engineers, like, getting an additional soldier and health, improving your offensive power, that's really sick. Like, I can imagine you get assault engineers with flamethrowers, and you're a force to be reckoned with. So here's Veteran Cruise. Grants veterancy level 1 to all vehicles. Just straight up, boop, here you go. You're all veterans now, which, that's kind of sick. And then field repairs. Vehicle crews automatically repair their own vehicles when stationary and out of combat. That's cool. So... In, like, Company of Heroes 1, this used to be an ability, and you activate it for a munition cost, and then your dudes repair their stuff. But it, in this game, it's just a passive thing, which is really nice, so they buff that. That's, that's a pretty reasonable buff, I think. M31 Recovery Vehicle. So, this is a recovery vehicle. I would imagine it operates the same way as the... Uh, Panzer Elite Recovery Vehicle from Company of Heroes 1, where you get a tank wreck or vehicle wreck, and you can go out and recover it, rebuild it on the battlefield, which is pretty sick. War Machine. Reduce the manpower cost of all vehicles from production building. So, this is cool, because in Company of Heroes 1, War Machine was, yet again, an active ability where you click on it. And then while the ability is active, if any of your tanks die, they just get reinforced for free. But this seems to be more of a passive, where it reduces the cost of vehicles uh, just across the board, which is sick. So here's Armored Doctrine. Fast deploy, reduces the production time vehicles from production buildings. So just everything, all your vehicles build faster. Uh, strength and steel, reduce the pop cost of all vehicles, reducing manpower drain, enabling creation of a larger army. So this is like, you want lots of tanks, which I think is sick. I want to, I want to do this. I really want to. Here's the M8 Scott SPG, self-propelled gun, and it's got the 75mm light howitzer, which is cool. Seek and Destroy globally increases vehicle speed, rate of fire, and accuracy while active. So this is just, you buff all your tanks, which is sick. And if you've got, excuse me, if you've got Strength and Steel, and then you Seek and Destroy, like, holy crap, you have a whole bunch of Lightning Bruiser tanks just bearing down on your enemy, that's awesome. And then we've got the Easy 8 Easily one of the most iconic tanks of uh, World War II. This is this is what the, uh, the movie Fury was based on. That Their tank was an Easy 8. And it has a Rifleman Squad Escort, which is cool. I like that a lot. Alright, Special Ops Battle Group. M29 Weasel. And when I went over this before, when I thought I was recording, I said that... Uh, my buddy Crotalus is really going to like this because this is like the first World War II game that I've ever seen where it shows some weasel in it. Um, or has a weasel in it, rather, which is really sick. I think that's cool. So the weasel's sort of like the U.S.'s variant of like the, the British Universal Carrier. So it's cool to see that. And this is a recon vehicle, so I'd imagine it has good sight range or whatever. This is the Weasel Salt Team, so it has an engineer squad with a flamethrower in it. That is cool. Um, that that's, that's really cool. Mark Vehicle. This is like Mark of Death, I guess. Designates a recon plane to mark a hostile vehicle, and then I'm guessing attacks against it are uh, more potent, which is cool. 
strafing runs again p47 mustang dual strafing run probably decimates infantry and then this is exciting the m4a1 sherman whiz bang deploys an m4a1 sherman whiz bang so in company of heroes one and i think two i don't remember if it was in two or not but we had the calliope and the whiz bang is kind of like the calliope but it's got a smaller load of munitions than the calliope does i hope that the calliope comes back in this game as well um but if not i think it's sick that i get to play with the whiz bang because I haven't seen this in any other World War II game, the Woods Bang, so I'm, I'm excited. But um, I'm guessing that when the game comes out, they're going to have more than just three options. They're going to be able to, like, there's going to be different trees. Um, I know Company of Heroes 1, that took the form of different commanders, and you'd have to purchase them. Hopefully they don't do that in this game. Because the grind to get commanders in Company of Heroes 2 was just absurd, as opposed to purchasing them outright, which is like hundreds of dollars if you wanted every single one. So hopefully they don't monetize it like that when this game comes out, I'm hoping. But anyway, yeah, Sherman Wizmang, that's fucking sick! Can't wait to play with that. And then combat operations, so raiding flares. Designates flare barrage. I would guess this reveals. Uh, like the map or whatever. Um, and then smoke screen, same deal. You're smoking an area, you're blocking line of sight, you're concealing units, what have you. And then commando squad, SSF commando squad. I have no idea what this is, but looks kind of cool. Uh, assault operation, globally increases infantry capture and decapture speeds and making them harder to hit when active. So this is like a, fuck you, I'm taking this point and you can't stop me. Which I think is sick. Like, in, in the previous games there was kind of this difficult balance of, do I want to get my guys in cover or do I want to capture the point? And this is like, I'm guessing this is like, oh, you don't need to take cover, you just activate this and then you keep capping the point. Uh, air resupply, so this is interesting. Get an M157 AT gun, an M1919 machine gun, and a fuel crate to the target area. So, like, that's cool. The M1919 is a 30 cal, uh, but this is kind of like you supply your troops. I think that's cool. So, anyway. Uh, now let's take a look at the Wehrmacht! All right, so mechanized battle group, puncture your opponent's front line with light vehicles, artillery support, and assault groups until heavy armor arrives. And we've got mechanized armor tree, so raid package globally allows all light vehicles to capture territory, and all vehicles can use the smoke canister's ability. This is cool. This is kind of like the raid from Company of Heroes 1 and 2 where you get your light vehicle to cap something. But also, giving your light vehicle smoke canisters is sick. That's really cool. So I can imagine if there's a light vehicle, you're trying to cap a point, you're being attacked, you just pop smoke. And then, what's your enemy going to do? Like, you're going to cap that point, no matter what. So that's... That seems almost OP to me, but whatever. So uh, we've got Stug Assault Group. The Stug 3 assault gun with a Panzer Grenadier squad escort. So this is a common theme I'm, I'm noticing where if you use an ability that brings uh, a, a, um, a tank to the battlefield, they have an accompanying squad, which I think is sick. Like, this game seems like it's going to have lots of combined arms tactics to it. So there's the 8 Rad Armored Car. I have no idea what this vehicle is. I'm going to have to Wikipedia this, but, like, deploys an 8-rad armored car. And it looks like there's a bunch of troops sitting in the back of it or something, but I can't really tell. Anyway. Then there's the Panther. Panther heavy tank. Deploys a Panther heavy tank to the target location. And uh, without infantry support. 
So, like, what's interesting to me is that they call this a heavy tank. I mean, in real in real life, the Panther was a heavy tank in all but name. It weighed a lot, but it also moved fast. It was quite the lightning bruiser when it worked. It had a lot of reliability issues, as did several tanks in World War II. But, like, I think it's cool that they're calling this a heavy tank because that's basically what the Panther was. And at the time, the Panther was more like a main battle tank. But, uh... You know, we're talking World War II, so main battle tanks in concept didn't really exist yet. So, that's cool. Um, mechanized support. Fuel seizure. Infantry that capture fuel point immediately grant plus five fuel. <coughs> this seems like a, like a meh ability to me. Um, I'm not sure that you're going to be capturing a lot of fuel points unless, you're, unless the enemy is taking them and you're recapturing them, but that's not ideal. You want to take and hold something. So, eh, I'm not sure that this would be great or whatever. Um, and then there's spotting scopes. Enables vehicles to be upgraded with spotting scopes to improve line of sight. So, you're adding line of sight to uh, to vehicles, which is really nice. Just, I'm guessing more vision range. But, you know, that's cool. Um, mechanized assault. Vehicles slowly auto-repair and improve the survivability of infantry. So this is cool. This is like the combined arms ability, it seems. Because if your vehicles are repairing and you have infantry surrounding them, like, that's so sick! But, um, yeah, I, I, I think that's going to be cool. Uh, zeroing artillery barrage designates an artillery barrage to target position. It's just calling an artillery. Nothing super special about that, I don't think. Uh, Stahlstruppen assault package. Enables Stahlstruppen to be upgraded with STG-44 assault rifles and camouflage. So I'm guessing camouflage it will like conceal them when they're in cover. Or or when they're not moving or whatever, which is kind of cool. And then they've got the West Bay self-propelled artillery, which, this is cool. Like, uh, the original Company of Heroes, or no, Company of Heroes 2 had a few SPGs, kind of like the, um, uh, the SU-25, I think, for the Russians, or 75? Yeah, it was 75. SU-75 for the Russians, uh, you can just have it be an indirect fire unit where you launch it up into the air. I'd imagine this works the same way. So, Breakthrough Battle Group. And I, I just comment, I commented before, uh, before I, when I thought I was recording, like, this is a really cool icon. This is like a classic uh, Company of Heroes 1 icon. And I think... A lot of these icons are just placeholders right now, and they're going to get updated uh, either before or sometime after the game's release. That's what I'm guessing. Or they could just be including these as a throwback, which is sick. But, alright, Breakthrough Battle Group. Advance forward with Assault Infantry and Breakthrough Tactics while you prepare your economy for heavy armor support. Now that's cool. I like that. Um... Assault forces, you got assault grenadiers. I don't know what kind of gun that is, so it looks like an MP40. Kind of hard to tell. Yeah, that's an MP40. And then there's breakthrough. Globally increases the capture of all infantry when active, which, that's cool. Like, just, you pop an ability and then you cap a point faster. I think that's cool. Smoke bombing run, so you're dropping smoke on the battlefield, once again to conceal line of sight. Mechanized assault group, deploy 251 medium carrier with Stahl's troop and squad escort. And then there's incendiary bombing run, absolute classic, just decimate infantry in this area. Rapid production enables vehicles to be manufactured at blistering speeds to bolster the front lines. So I don't know how fast this is, but, like, being able to crank out vehicles would be really sick. And then here's the uh, 2.5 ton cargo truck. I believe that's an Opa Blitz, but anyway, um, that's 
I wonder if this will be like Company of Heroes 2, where once you cap a sector, you can send a truck there to lock it down and then get more resources. I have no idea. I have no idea what this is going to do. It doesn't really explain it in the ability. Blitzkrieg! Globally increases vehicle speed, rate of fire, and vehicles are harder to hit when active. So this is like, you're going to bum rush the enemy with all the armor you've got, and just, yeah, awesome. So, Panzer IV Command Tank. This is neat. Um, I think the idea of having a command tank on the battlefield is cool. I think that was a thing in Company of Heroes 2, and I think even the Panzer Elite in Company of Heroes 1, maybe the Brits did this too. I don't totally remember that, but that's cool. Um, and this isn't the only faction with the command tank. I think the Africa Corps has this too. So... Here's the, the dreaded Tiger heavy tank. So what what interests me is that the Tigers in the breakthrough battle group. You would think that the Panther would be the one breaking through because that was more of the Panther's role in real life was to uh, break through and be uh, uh, like uh, a tank tank superiority, I guess. Whereas with the Tiger. Tiger's not really a breakthrough tank. It's more of like, I'm going to sit here and wait to ambush my enemies or whatever. Uh, but uh, that's that's what its use case was in real life. Obviously, video games are different. Like, they're gonna, you're going to be able to send in a Tiger to break through an enemy line. So that's kind of that's cool. Okay, so moving on. Luftwaffe! Combine airborne infantry and heavy emplacements to take and hold ground, calling upon air support when needed. Luftwaffe, air to ground, got reconnaissance run, designates a recon run over the target area, so it's just recon, self-explanatory. Stuka strafing run, nice, self-explanatory. Falschirmjäger squad paradrop, paradrops Falschirmjäger squad to target location. So I believe in Company of Heroes 2, the Ob West faction, Abba Commando West, they were able to... What was it? They would be able to drop Falsham Yagers, and then those Falsham Yagers would uh, be able to capture territory, and you can drop them, like, anywhere on the map. So you could just steal territory from enemies at the beginning of the game. I wonder if this is a similar thing. So we've got Fragmentation Bombs, so... Obviously devastating to infantry, I would imagine. Just completely wrecks them. Stuka Loiter designates two Stuka, Stukas to overwatch an area. So I'm guessing, like, these two planes would just fly in circles over something and then bomb whatever enemy comes in. What I don't know is if the enemy would see them overhead and know not to go in there, or if you'd just be charging in there or whatever and never having any warning. So... Uh, Luftwaffe Field Support. We have Fallschirm Pioneer Squad Paradrop. So, this is interesting. I don't know what this unit is, but I'm guessing it's like a combat engineer that you can just drop wherever, which is cool. Infantry Reserves. Reduce the reinforcement cost of all infantry units by 25%. I think that's kind of a cool passive ability. So, just keep coming at the enemy. Luftwaffe Combat Group calls in a Werbelwind Flak Panzer with the Jaeger Squad Escort. Alright, uh, sorry about that. So, the Werbelwind Flak Panzer uh, this was in, this is definitely in Company of Heroes 1. I don't remember if it was in Company of Heroes 2. I'm pretty sure it was, though. LG-40 Recoilless Launcher Pair Drop. So this is kind of cool. You drop, drop like an anti-tank weapon for infantry. And I'm guessing, like, this is just up for grabs. So you'd have to be careful for enemy infantry grabbing that as well, because that could be a problem. And then the Flak 36 AT gun emplacement. So this is like an 88, and it would enable 
Pioneers and Fushram Pioneers construct the AT emplacement in the field. That's pretty sick. All right, so now let's look at Africa Core. And this is cool because uh, Africa Core has a lot of these uh, Italian infantry battle group. And yeah, I notice they're using the same icon as the one for the Wehrmacht here. So they would, I would imagine they would replace that. But Italian infantry battle group. Battle group focused on Guastatori assault engineers, artillery, and counterattacks. So Guastatori, I guess these are assault engineers. <coughs> kind of cool. Defensive operations. So it allows Ponce Pioneers and Guastatori to build teller mines, tank traps, HMG bunkers, and reinforced barbed wire. So this is like your run-of-the-mill build base defenses type thing. Territory booby traps. Enables Panzer Pioneers and Guastatori to plant booby traps on captured territory and victory points. So I guess you capped a point, now you booby trap it. So when an enemy tries to take it, they just take damage or get killed or whatever. That's cool. <coughs> I can see that being a real pain to go up against. And then the 105 field howitzer, which is cool. Now, this is cool for the defensive warfare. The L640. Um, the L640 is an Italian tank. You don't see Italian tanks very often in... World War II games. Certainly I've never seen one in a World War II game until now. And having this in Company of Heroes is so sick. And I think it's awesome that this game has like the Africa Corps has set its focus on the North African theater. Which I think is really cool. But um, having having a light tank, that's just so sick. Hold the line, designate a friendly sector, will improve the performance of infantry within the sector and be more difficult to capture. So, this is cool. Um, I think that, uh, like, if, if you're just capturing a sector with infantry, this, this can be difficult to deal with. I'm noticing that a lot of, a lot of abilities and stuff are focused around capturing a sector more easily or denying your opponent from capturing a sector which is really cool because that's what company of heroes is all about just capping points uh but uh yeah so registered artillery designated to light artillery barrage over the selected territory or victory point so this this looks like mortar shells so i would imagine infantry light vehicles would have a hard time with this propaganda war designated to barrage propaganda leaflets over the target area so I would imagine this is kind of like the um, the terror doctrine from the Wehrmacht from uh, Company of Heroes 1 where you just drop propaganda leaflets on infantry and then you force, they forcibly retreat, which is cool. Um, <clears throat> so prepare positions. This is like the turtle ability. All team weapons and placements have increased line of sight and take less incoming damage. That would be just really annoying to deal with if you're trying to gain ground on someone and they have this and they've made a bunch of emplacements already. But yeah, turtle turtle play style. It's kind of cool. Obby's 305mm barrage. So it can't be overstated how devastating a 305mm barrage is. That That's a lot of boom packed into each shell. And uh, it says flares are launched during the barrage, so I'm guessing, I'm guessing that it's like any artillery barrage in like Company of Heroes one or two, where you know drops spotting rounds, which are flares, and the enemy kind of knows, uh oh, better get out of the way, and then boom, got him. And I would imagine all but the toughest of units would not survive a 305 barrage. Like, the, it's just absolutely devastating, which is sick. All right, Italian Combined Arms Battle Group. Battle Group focused around utilizing the combined arms tactics of air, infantry, and mechanized forces. Now, this is cool. 
I think this game is going to be focusing on combined arms a lot, even more so than Company of Heroes 1 and 2, which I'm excited about. Um, so we have the under combined arms. Versaglary Squad. I have no idea what that is. Going to be entirely honest. And then here's Versaglary Bolster. Increase the squad of all Versaglary squads by one. Which is cool. It's always good to have an extra squad member. Vehicle support secure location. Increases the capture and decapture rate of infantry when they're near vehicles. So this is cool. You send in infantry to capture a point and then you have tanks. Uh, supporting them, and you just cap quicker. Vreta Model 30 Light Machine Guns. Globally upgrades Bursaglary and Panzer Grenadiers with one Vreta Model 30 Light Machine Gun. Squads can be further upgraded with one additional Vreta Model 30. Interesting. So it's kind of like the um, uh, squad automatic weapon upgrades, like the uh, like the bar and the STG-44 from like Company of Heroes 1 and 2, but it's like you can get two of them per squad. Two light machine guns in one squad. That's a lot of firepower. Vehicle support, force recon. Increase the line of sight of infantry when they're near vehicles. Uh, so, like, I'm guessing this is just um, a passive ability. And if you have infantry near vehicles, so it'll be like, oh, well, better look out for the enemy. We got vehicles to support, and then boom, you can spot more things. That's, that's cool. I like how there's a passive ability that is kind of just a representation of, like, combined arms and how cool that is, which is cool. All right. Semo Vente, the 7518 assault gun. So 75 millimeter by 18, yeah, I don't know what the 18 means. 18 pounds projectile? I don't know. I don't know what this vehicle is, to be honest with you, but I, I would assume it fills a similar role as the Stug. And then here's the M1340 light tank, another Italian tank design. I just think it is so sick that Italian tanks like this are in the game. Like, even this one that I have no idea about. This is really cool. Strafing run. Designates two JU-87s to strafe the target area. Junkers. But, uh, yeah, I'm sure that splits infantry apart pretty badly. Pact of Steel. Reduces the cost of all light vehicles. This is interesting to me. Um... I'm guessing it also reduces fuel cost, so you can just keep spamming light vehicles even if you don't have a lot of fuel. That would be that'd be pretty neat. Artillery cover designates light and medium off-map artillery to overwatch target area. So you pick an area, you're like, hey, if enemies go here, boom, boom. So that's that's kind of cool. I think Company of Heroes 2 had abilities sort of like this. All right, on to armored support. Battle group focused on supporting armored assaults and mechanized warfare. And we've got support and air power. Vehicle awareness enables vehicles to utilize vehicle awareness ability. I find it interesting that there's a Sherman, uh, Sherman E2 or E3 tank in the background here. Uh, and this, this seems like kind of a placeholder to me. I have no idea what vehicle awareness means, but I would guess it just gives some uh, increased sight range or whatever. Increased detection against cloaked units, maybe, but who knows. Salvage kits enables Panzer Pioneers and Panzer Grenadiers to use the rapid salvage ability, which is cool. So I'm guessing you find wrecks and then you get fuel out of them. That's That's cool. Panzer Storm. Globally increase the speed of all vehicles and grants them muni to engine criticals when active. This is cool. This is like a Blitzkrieg tactics. I'm going to bum rush you and you're not going to stop me. That That's exciting. Stuka Dive Bomb. Designates a dive bomb run over the target area. Okay, pretty self-explanatory. Stuka Anti-Tank Loiter. Designates two Stukas to overwatch an area. So I'm guessing if an enemy tank comes in, it'll just get bombed to shit or something. I don't know. Armored Warfare. 
veteran gunner. This improves penetration while vehicle units. I would imagine that it's an abstraction for the gunners to know where to hit their target. So that's kind of cool. Superior fire drills improves the performance of coaxial and hull machine guns for all vehicle units. And this is this is cool because um, I'm guessing it's a passive ability and it would make a lot of uh, tanks more effective against infantry. So that's cool. Flampanzer 3 medium tank. This is exciting. Um, I like, I love flamethrowers and I love tanks. So I absolutely adore flamethrower tanks. This is going to be a lot of fun. And this is like a, a Panzer 3 but converted to have to be a Flampanzer, which is pretty sick. And then down here we've got the other, the other command tank. So we noticed in the, um, in the armored doctrine of the uh, Wehrmacht that they had a uh, Panzer IV uh, command tank. And these guys do too, which is cool. Battlefield salvage. Enemy vehicles that are destroyed by affected units grant manpower and fuel when active. I'm pretty sure that this icon is a placeholder because it doesn't really fit the description very well. But... Uh, yeah, that's, that's cool. You get extra manpower and fuel just by killing things. Puts a bounty on enemy vehicles. Alright, and... The Brits. Oi, let's take a look at the Brits, mate. What the Brits got? Airborne Battle Group. Call upon deadly airstrikes and airdrop to lead infantry to dominate the battlefield. Aerial support. Smoke bombing run. Rapidly airdrop smoke pots onto the battlefield. So, yet another smoke ability for concealing, which is cool. Recon loiter. You're recon loitering over the area. Pretty self-explanatory. Supply drop. Pair drops two munitions and two medical supply crates to target location. So that's kind of neat. Pair drop reinforcements. Designates a reinforcement loiter over the target area. So I'm guessing if you have squads in this area and they lose... Uh, lose... Uh, uh, troops or whatever, you just reinforce them from the air, which is really cool. P-47 Mustang Rocket Strike. In fact, this seems very similar to the, um... Let's, let's take a look at the U.S. and, uh... This is, yeah, this is like identical to the Airborne Battle Group. Interesting. That they, that the U.S. and the Brits both have the same thing there. But, uh... Yeah, so I won't I won't bother to Oh wait, what is this? Indian Artillery Battle Group? Wait a minute. I was looking at the wrong thing. Okay. No wonder they were so similar, because I'm I'm just an idiot. Indian Artillery Battle Group. Battle group focused on elite Gurkha infantry and artillery bombardment. So we've got infantry assault. Volunteer infantry, receiver reinforcement costs and time vault infantry squads by 33%. This is significant. Um, very significant. Uh, and then we've got Valor improves offensive and defensive capabilities as infantry as they take casualties. Now this is really cool. Um, this would make infantry really tough to kill. And then being able to get reinforcements like that would be cool. So here's the Gurkha Rifles section. Now, I'm noticing this symbol. It's like two, um, uh, uh, I forget what that blade is called, but it's one that the uh, sniper from Team Fortress 2 uses as a melee weapon. But um, I'm seeing two of those crossed together uh, with a, uh, with the crown over it. Now, I don't know what, a Gurkha rifle section was historically, but I think it might have been like African volunteers or something. I have no idea. I frankly don't know. All right, pillage. Infantry squads grant resources to the player when they kill enemy infantry squad members or vehicles. This is cool. Uh, like just being able to have infantry just pillage destroyed uh, squads and vehicles. That's cool. War Cry globally increases the speed and offensive capabilities of all infantry squads when active. So just, yeah, you're rallying your troops. I can imagine this would be very potent 
uh, along with Valor, having having those two active at the same time. Like, this is very infantry-centric. Like, you want to use infantry to overpower your enemy. That's cool. Here's artillery support. A towed 4.2-inch heavy mortar, which is cool. So, I'm noticing that towed weapons are are going to happen in Company of Heroes 3. To my knowledge, that is new. Like, there's never been vehicles to tow the weapons before. I think that's awesome. Like, gun towing? Oh yeah, that's so sick. And there's a heavy mortar too, so that's going to be cool. Artillery saturation. All artillery units and mortars will fire additional shells during barrages. So I'm guessing this is a passive ability, and then any artillery that you fire is just going to be more saturated. Pretty self-explanatory. Off-map airburst barrage. Designate that over the target location. I can imagine this will be absolutely devastating to infantry and light vehicles. Because uh, airburst, airburst munitions do not fuck around. And then we've got perimeter monitor. Designates off-map artillery to overwatch all friendly sectors. So the Brits had something like this in... Uh, Company of Heroes 2, I believe, where if an enemy encroached on your territory and this was active, uh, y your guns would just hit them, which is cool. I think that's cool, but uh, yeah. BL 5.5 artillery emplacement, naval sapper section to construct BL 5.5 artillery emplacement. So, yeah, you can build, build arty. This is cool. This is like very artillery centric which I find interesting all right British armored battle group battle group focus on supporting infantry with armored vehicles heavy armor support rigorous vehicle training global increase the experience rate gain of all vehicle units which that's pretty sick radio net increases vehicle accuracy sight and rate of fire when active so it's an active ability and it just buffs your vehicles apparently which is cool crusader double a medium tank so i'm guessing this is like an anti-aircraft variant of the crusader i'm not really aware of this uh despite being a tank person i'm kind of ignorant to a lot of british tank designs churchill 4 heavy tank absolutely iconic tank of world war ii i think that's sick uh that they have this and then there's also a Churchill Black Prince. Now, this is an either-or option. You have to pick one of these. Just with any of the two upgrades uh, for all these trees. So I don't know what the difference is between Churchill Heavy Tank and the Churchill Black Prince. I think the regular Churchill is just a well-rounded, all-purpose tank. Whereas the Black Prince is, like, suited to an anti-tank role or something. But I'm not entirely sure. But anyway. Field support and logistics. Engineer detachments reduce the deployment reinforce cost of Royal Engineers by 25%. That's that's pretty significant. You can get lots of engineers that way. Light vehicle withdrawn refit. Orders the light vehicle be withdrawn from the battlefield. Ford repair assembly allows Royal Engineers sections to construct the Ford repair assembly. I don't know what that is. Oh yeah, and for the withdrawn refit, I think this is kind of cool. I'm guessing that this is similar to the um, what the Soviets and Company of Heroes 2 had, which was you withdraw an infantry squad uh, to be able to field more important infantry or whatever. But I'm guessing this is for vehicles and judging by the fuel symbol you probably get fuel from it although it, it, it could be could be misleading there i don't know recon artillery designated a recon loiter over the target area that will call in off map artillery strikes on hostile units so this is kind of cool um i'm guessing you just pick a section of the map and if enemies go in there then they get bombed by uh artillery which is cool Designate targets. Designates a recon loiter over the target area that will mark targets in the area. So I don't know if this is just for 
vision or if it's like a mark for death thing where the unit takes more damage or whatever but yeah it's it's kind of cool okay british and sea battle group air and sea battle group battle group focused on utilizing air and sea support royal navy support supply surplus resource points can be upgraded with resource catches and strategic points can be upgraded with field infirmaries that's that's cool uh, I think this is super sick. Uh, because, you know, you capture something, you lock it down, get more resources. Like, resources are everything in Company of Heroes. If you don't, if you don't have resources, then you can't build the units. Naval Blockade. Enemies cannot capture neutral territory and resource points when active. This is really interesting to me. Because if you block territory with an active ability it's like ha you can't capture anything so like i'm assuming because it's not listed in here they can still capture victory points or the uh strategic points or whatever but like yeah slowing an enemy down from capturing territory is really interesting and like once again a lot of these abilities are just very focused around the resource points themselves. Centaur medium tank, deploy centaur medium tank. I have no idea what the centaur is, completely ignorant of what this tank was, what its role was during World War II, but it's a tank, so it's cool. Assault flares, illuminates all enemy frontline sectors with off-map flares. Infantry units have increased speed and offensive when active. That's cool, so you pop this, you see like where the enemy is on the front line and then you push him with infantry that have a buff. That's cool. <coughs> naval bombardment designates the 356 millimeter naval barrage at the target area. This would be absolutely devastating. Like unbelievably devastating. You'd probably just destroy anything that's in there, which is really cool. Royal Air Force, Commando Section, Pair Drop. Pair Drop's Commando Section. Neat. Pack Howitzer Pair Drops. You drop a uh, Pack Howitzer, and uh, yeah, that it's like big gun. I would imagine it's 75 or 105, maybe a 150, but that's, that's cool. Commando LMG Section, Pair Drop. Pair Drop's Commando LMG Section, Target Location. Incendiary bombing run, and it's got a picture of a building catching fire, which is cool. Does thing it's a heavy incendiary bombing run over the target area, just absolutely decimates some infantry and in cover with that. That'd be cool. Anti tank rocket loiter, does thing it's two Hawker Typhoons to Overwatch an area. This is kind of like the Stuka loiter that the Wehrmacht and Afrika Corps has. All right, and that's that. I'm going to continue playing as the U.S. Uh, before I was recording, I played like two games as the U.S. and lost both of them, but I'm getting a better feel for it now, like how the game works. Um, I also wanted to say that I really like the music on the main menu. I like this, uh, this very cool, like, reminiscent of Company of Heroes 1 background. And the gameplay in Company of Heroes 3 is really cool because it's like a hybrid of gameplay for Company of Heroes 1 and 2. It has all of the um, better fleshed out mechanics of Company of Heroes 2, but the game feels like you're playing Company of Heroes 1. And then obviously Company of Heroes 3 like throws some of its other cool stuff in there too. So without further ado, start the match. And let's get matchmaking. So my first game I lost pretty badly. I didn't capture a single victory. Well, I captured some of the strategic points, but I wasn't able to hold them. And I lost having inflicted no victory points on the enemy. My second game, after I kind of got a feel for like how the early game plays out, I did much better, but... I still ended up losing. So I'm hoping that game three is not gonna be not gonna be like that. I'm hoping game three is uh third time's the charm. 
maybe I'll win, maybe I won't, but I'm more interested in, like, exploring the game and messing around with stuff than actually winning. Because uh, I, I do kind of suck at Company of Heroes, and I suck at RTS in general, despite it being my favorite genre, but, like, I think... So far, I'm having a lot of fun with Company of Heroes 3. Very glad I pre-ordered it because of uh, the uh, the quality that I'm seeing here. It's just really good. So hopefully I get a, a match soon. Going a little bit over the estimated time here. The cool thing is that I, is that I have been able to find other people who are playing, which is pretty sick. I guess a lot of people are, uh, got accepted into the multiplayer test, as well as myself. <coughs> Alright, in the two minute mark. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm very excited for Company of Heroes 3. I think... I think it's going to be a really fun game. Probably probably it's going to be the best Company of Heroes game yet. And I'm I'm not I'm not really embellishing when I say that. I'm not trying to embellish. That's just how I feel based on what I've played, what I've seen so far. <coughs> All right. Matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. Here we go. Just had to ask nicely. Again, Silky Steve being the Africa Core. So far, all three games that I've played have been against people playing as Africa Core. I don't know if that is a coincidence or what, but uh, this looks like a different map than what I was on previous two games. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Wonder if Company of Heroes 3 will have a free-for-all mode. Like, uh... Because I know 1 and 2 are only two teams. All right, here it is. Oh yeah, this is definitely a different map from before. All right, first things first, let's get scouts. So I found that engineer squads are not what, how you build buildings. So you do that uh, in here instead. And then guys come out of your HQ to build it, which is kind of cool. And I like that. All right. Actually going to see if I can turn up the audio just... Oh, no, it's already at 100%. And I do have midnight mode on, on the audio. All right, it's more scouts. I want to capture a lot more territory. I'm gonna go armored. Armored this game because I I haven't I haven't really had a chance to play around with armor very much. I've ended up losing the game before I get to that point. So we'll see if uh, I fare any better here. You know what? Screw it. Let's cap this point. Why not? All right. Let's. Panzer Grenadiers. Nope. Keep capping. Keep capping. Come on. There we go. All right. All right. Let's get the truck in there. Okay. So what I want to start doing now is transitioning from building scout squads to rifle squads. Oh, what have they got? 
by an armored vehicle. All right, well, I lost my scouts there. Okay. I'm probably going to lose this Jeep, too. In fact, get the fuck out of there. All right. Yep, I know I'm going to lose that victory point. That's okay, though. Auto reinforce active. Cool. So that remembered what I did the last game. So I probably do want engineers. All right, here we go. Good, 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 good. Let's keep capping. Yeah, 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 that's right. Run away. All right, let's capture this. Both are in full cover. Okay. All right. So I need to tech up. So as it turns out, <coughs> at least with the U.S., how building works, so you, you pick which buildings you want from here. And then there's like three different support centers, air support, mechanized support, and infantry support. And when you pick one of those, it just builds it on the side here, kind of like an add-on building. All right, get the fuck out of there. Ah, too late. Yeah, that's right. You're, gonna, you're not going to take this point if I can help it. All right, engineers, engineers, come on. Mechanized support center. Get another rifleman squad out here. like doing this but I want to stop this guy from capping there we go that's right you better run losing a point over here all right Looks like an MG gun team. Alright, good. Move up infantry. Alright, I've got him flanked now. Alright. Gotta get my head out of my ass. Keep capping territories here. This is how you win the game. Capture territories. Alright, let's get out of there. Probably won't make it, but we'll see. Huh, maybe. Support veteran C receives veteran C experience from nearby allies from they earn veteran experience. Shared is split between each unit with a civilian near that ally. That's cool. I like that. Alright, get out of there. So, so far I think I'm doing better than my enemy. I've captured more territory. Definitely doing better in terms of victory points. Oh, shit. I missed a grenade there. All right, just get the fuck out of there. No way I win that. All right. Auto reinforce. Good. Okay. 
Okay, so this is not for free. The other one is. Alright, I'm just going to stake out here. Come on, let's get a grenade out. There it is. Get the fuck out of there. Too late. Ooh. Need some recon, sir? You men, keep that formation tight. Let's secure that ground. All right, here we go. Okay, here we go. Motor pool. Let's see. I don't want a motor pool yet. I want to rush straight to tanks. System pair crews. Okay, that's auto magic. M19, 18 Browning. Browning automatic rifles, so bar. Alright, it's taking this victory point. Come on, sticky bombing. Keep up your pace of fire. Damn it. Killed the guy who was cocking his arm back. Alright, get out of there. Oh, he lived. Alright. Alright, gotta do something about this. That's right, you better run. It's my victory point. Can't have it. Ah, oh, shit. God damn. Get a sticky bomb out there. Alright, get out of there. Yeah, that's right. Come on, let's get some more rifle men. Alright. Excellent. I guess I do want to auto-reinforce. Should have built my uh, medical thing a little bit closer. That's alright. Breach, sticky bomb, okay. Alright, rifles, let's take it. Not enough resources. Yeah, that's right. Better run. Come on, let's get this victory point. Cover time. Come on, come on. All right, get out of there. Crew shock, nice. Okay. Almost got enough for a tank to... Well, not really. Right, 
fuck. Damn. That was bloody. I love it. Alright, just need more rifle squads. Man, these guys are just fucking dominating. More riflemen over there. All right. Okay. Well, he's not making any plays for this point. So I think I'm safe. He's just playing conservatively and he wants to hold these two. That is fine by me. Alright, let's get another scout squad out so we can start taking territory. Alright. I will take this victory point and hold it. That's right. Coming back with a vengeance. Yeah, that's right. Come on. Take it. Man, these are really just... Get out of there. Alright, now we can retreat. Weapon picked up. What did they pick up? I don't know. I can get two bars for squad. Nice. Alright. So that, that's got me in a good place for now. I knew it. I knew we would go for this. Yeah, too late. Oh shit, okay. Strength and steel, so you can destroy. Alright. God fucking damn it. I really need tanks. That's what I need. Alright, let's keep the riflemen coming. Damn it. Let's get out of there. Alright. This isn't good. 
Alright, come on, Tank Depot. That's not good. God fucking damn, I'm getting chewed up out here. Damn it. Martyr 3 H. That's cool that they have martyrs in this game. That's us. Let's head out, boys. Stay together. All right. And cancel riflemen. <clears throat> Need 90 fuel, 70, 90. Damn. All right. Riflemen it is. Seems like the martyr's not quite attacking. Homing boulders. Alright. Okay, how's my fuel situation? It's going to be better once I cap this. That's why the enemy's fielding so many tanks. He's got three fuel points, I only have one. Holy shit. Damn it. I panicked. Should not have treated. What the fuck is this shit? He's got his whole goddamn military over here. God, that's fucking frustrating. Seems like Company of Heroes has not changed in those terms. I'm going to just build a whole bunch of tanks and sit on this point. That's why I prefer Annihilation to uh, Victory Points. Alright, I'll see what I can do with my scouts. How much fuel have I got? 69 giggity. Uh, I need it, sis. I need the Sherman medium tank. Okay, war machine. Reduce the manpower cost of all vehicles. Good. Come on, we can get these guys. Oh, never mind. Ah, uh, they're taking my victory point too. God, that's fucking annoying. Alright, 86 fuel. It's a little bit more. There we go. 
I'm so happy to see the Tank Depot back in the game. That's some classic Company of Heroes 1. God damn it. What a fucking prick. Forgot to say GLHF, but whatever. Did I forget to say GLHF? Yes, I did. Maybe I'm the prick. That's what I'd like to hear. All right. What? I can load him onto the tank? Oh. Oh, hell yeah. Tank to sign. Here we fucking come. Oh, man. That's so sick. Alright, let's take it. All right, let's take out this bitch first. All right, what's the biggest threat to my tank? That. Oh, shit. God damn it. Oh, that's what I get for only having one Sherman, right? All right, I'm quitting. Okay. So I should I, I should reiterate, I'm not very good at this game. I'm not good at Company of Heroes. And to me, like, it felt cheesy that that guy was just sitting on the two victory points knowing that he would win. I felt like there wasn't a whole lot that I could do that game. Um, maybe if I had decided to run around and capture other points instead of victory points and then make a final push once I had tanks, that would have been the better situation. But I guess he had the... Uh, he had the Nebelwerfer half-track or whatever it was, and that thing devastated my Sherman. Whereas I otherwise probably would have won that engagement. I also pushed the infantry in too soon. I should have taken out the two vehicles that were the biggest problem first. So I just need to micro better. That's what I need to do. I need to micro better and also have a better strategy than just wait for tanks and then push. I do like this game a lot though. I think the campaign is going to be loads of fun. Absolute loads of fun. And I've always preferred the campaign in Company of Heroes to playing against other people. Like, to me, Company of Heroes is a campaign-based RTS. Whereas a game like StarCraft, Brood War, and StarCraft II, to me, in my mind, are more of like a player-versus-player player RTS. But, obviously, 
both will work. Like, you can play through the campaign of StarCraft 2, or you can play through, uh, you can, you can do multiplayer in Company of Heroes. But what interests me is the fact that the game sort of naturally lends itself to one or the other. And in my opinion, Company of Heroes has always been about the campaign, at least for me. I've enjoyed the Company of Heroes campaign. It's very satisfying to beat the campaign. So I think that's probably the first thing that I'm going to do when this game comes out. It's just play through the campaign. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. Company of Heroes 2. Or I mean Company of Heroes 3. Fuck. You know what I mean. I'm excited for this game to come out. Damn, two times in a row matchmaking is like over three minutes. Before when I was playing, before I was recording, thought I was recording, but actually wasn't. Uh... I got in, like, below the estimated time, but now it's just going up and up. Definitely not the worst matchmaking time. I'm trying to think what is. Forget was it planetary annihilation? The Road to Tunis. Okay, I think this is a map I played on before. Yes. It's like a desert map. Okay, Private Negan. Ah, the Vamacht! So I won't be playing against the desert rats for once. All right, let's get some scouts. Cap the victory points. That'll give me a bit more of a margin. You know what? I'm going to take this fuel point first. Good, good. More scouts coming out. So my build order has been the same, except for the first game I played where I had no idea what I was doing. What I've been doing is putting scouts out to capture territory. Uh, I, I open with three scouts, or two in addition to the one that you get right off the bat. I want to get fuel first, because that'll support my play style. Armored Doctrine. Alright, now we got rifles. Let's get the rifles out here. Alright, here we go. Yeah, you better run. Alright, they're taking cover. I should do the same. Get my rifles up there and they'll slaughter these bastards. Oh, you think you have this, but you don't see my rifleman squad yet. Oh, he's in there. Shit. It's Volk's Grenadiers. Okay. Let's get more riflemen. Alright, let's get in cover. 
My scouts are going to get slaughtered out here. Looks like he has this undefended. Maybe he's got units back here. We'll find out. All right, rifles. Damn, this guy's giving me the old hug of death. Get more rifles out. Let's do the nanays. Whip the nanade. All right, I'm gonna win this engagement. He's gonna cap the point, maybe. Oh, never mind. He's got an MG team. Make a med station yet? Yeah, that's right. Hold it down. I'm gonna flank these guys and then take it out. There we go. Just getting full cover. What is this? Here we go. Come on. Get him with the grenade. Shit. I'm not doing too hot. I'm going to lose him. He's going to fucking die. And it's too late on that. Alright, come on. Come on. Got to leave these scouts. It's not making a play for the top here. Wonder if he has his fuel point capped. I hope not. All right, get the fuck out of there. Or you're dead. Fuck. Too late. Who can play that game, bitch? Here we go, come on. Ha! It's retreating. He's got his MGs aimed the wrong way. Victory point now under enemy control. 
And he's out in the open. I think I'm going to wreck this guy. Maybe not. We'll see. Alright, get out of there. More rifles. Need more rifles on the field. Oh, any support center. Let's get armored support. Get that add on going. Come on, fucking kill this MG. Yeah, he's packing up. Get him! Come on, shoot him! Damn it. Alright, run. So what is what is this? Poor Nottoman sprint. Okay. Why is veteran C1? There's a button to unlock it. Doesn't just unlock. I wonder if it costs something. Maybe not. All right. All right, rifles. Let's do this. Let's take that center point. We can do this. Sheer numbers. Yeah, get the fuck out of there. He relocated his MG. Guess I can't cap if I'm eating dirt. Alright. <clears throat> what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? Okay, these guys should be okay. Oh, shit, they grenaded. It's a veteran squad, don't want to lose that. Okay. Guessing he doesn't have anything guarding these two victory points. There's some cover I can take right here. I don't know if he's occupied this building. I certainly wouldn't if I were him. That thing looks like it's about to come down. CMG. Let's 
so he knows. Yeah, that's right. the heck is that noise? God damn. I'll get the fuck out of there. Alright. I need to tech up. Tank Depot... Alright, I already have rifles on the way. Let's get our tank depot. This guy will be expecting me to throw tanks at him. Probably not. He's very infantry, anti infantry focused. But we'll see. got all three victory points on me. We need to use our command points. Sector lost. No contact. Commander, all vehicles will now have less strain on our population without key. Enemy only 75 points left for us. Here we go. Alright, Gary's got a nice little nest in here. Come on. Keep it together. I'm going to fucking lose this game again. Come on, give me my fucking tank. It takes so much longer to get tanks in this game than in Company of Heroes 1. This guy's got fucking this machine gun. Motherfucker. Cap it, cap it, cap it, cap it. Oh my god, it's down to the fucking wire. Shit. Give me my fucking tank! Alright, I have a lot of... I need to start making. Yeah, as soon as this guy captures this point... Yeah, it's already GG. I'll give him the satisfaction. Just a couple points away anyway. Oh, okay. 
Damn. Here we go. Try this again. I think one more game. One more game, then I'll call it. I think I'm just too horny for tanks. Like, trying to get tanks out. But I'm not progressing through the game to get to that point. Like, rather than just going straight for tanks and having only riflemen, what I should probably try and do is get those intermediary vehicles out, like the Quad 50 half-track and stuff like that. Because they cost fuel, but they're not nearly as expensive in fuel as a tank is. So, we'll see. Oh, I can go AFK for a minute. I'm back, and we are still matchmaking, apparently. <sighs> I'm excited for this game. I know I've said that a few times at this point, but I think it'll be a lot of fun. It feels like it feels like a company of heroes game, which is really good. This feels like it's taking too long. <coughs> That's alright. I don't know why, but the first two or three games that I played were not like this. I didn't have to wait so long. I realize I'm repeating myself at this point. There's not a whole lot to talk about. There's not a whole lot to talk about. I won't talk. Here we go, finally. Ass. What a lovely name. I like this guy already. Oh, okay. Oh, this looks like uh, France. Is this in France? 
Fiasheteria. That's a funny way to spell diarrhea. Private ass. Private parts. Everyone's a private. Imagine a private leading the army. Oh, oh. Okay, that wasn't part of the intro of the game. Alright. I was just on this map, I think. Yeah. Except I was over here. Alright. to take points now, which is good. Alright, now just save up for my first rifle squad. There we go. Okay, so far so good. Alright, looks like they capped this point. But I beat him to the other one. Probably have fewer squads up than I do right now, so I should press that advantage while I still have it. Okay. Can I hit him? No. Now I can. Alright, getting hard cover. There we go. Perfect. More rifles out. Should have been a bit quicker on that. It's okay. Ah, well, I didn't have much requisition left anyway. It's not the end of the world. Okay. It's got a uh Ketten Crad. Nice. Okay. I'm pretty confident about this. Pretty confident that I'm gonna be in a good spot here. a little bit too thin over here. Actually, I don't want to make that. Let's get another rifleman out here. Alright, he's going to try and cap this out right. Guess I can't blame him. Alright, get the fuck out of there. All right. We're ready to go, sir. This is a fucking All right, get out of there. Double 
Where is this thing coming? Firefight. That's us, boys. Moving to new destination. Okay, good. Keeping my money low. That's what I want to do. So this guy isn't being very aggressive. So I'm content to keep sitting on these victory points and turtle up a bit. So I really want to get tanks out. I want to see what tanks are like in this game. I would rather do that than... Well, I don't know. Where are these guys moving? Alright, let's get inside that building. Okay, so I can't move them because they're pinned. Interesting. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna get bars on everyone. Alright, so fighting nest. Germans are all about base defenses. Get them in there. Alright. Wanna rush the tank depot. I know it's a bad idea. What I want to do. Grenade package. Right. Still need to get that. Fuck out of there. Oof, that was close. Alright, so now he's lost my position here, so he might come around. Looks like he's focusing most of everything in the middle, which isn't very smart because what he should be trying to do is take and hold victory points. Alright, so let's see. Get out of there. Alright, 
Okay. I actually really want to see how this thing works. Control F3. We should spend our munitions. I concur. So he's not being very aggressive. He's just defending this road. That's not a winning strategy. That's all right. I'm not going to complain about it. All right. Oh, oh, I see. Free reinforcement based on the number of casualties collected. Interesting. We've taken them down to 300 points, Commander. I'm going to put scouts up there, see what that's all about. Okay, there's the half track. So this guy is not being very aggressive. He's not really taking back any territory, interestingly enough. Right now he's taking that. Let's get some rifles in position here. Get out of there. It's bad news. All right, tank depot time. Here we go. They're not taking this point if I can help it. Ah, so you can only make one of each building now. Unless I just can't build two of the same building at the same time. <laughs> so now he's starting to come after me. Incoming? Incoming where? Come on, throw a grenade. Throw the fucking grenade. Yeah, get the fuck out of there. Alright, that's where my first tank will go. Another one. Come on. There it is. Alright. Shoot it. Get him. Yeah. Yeah, you better run. Here we go. All right. 
it. There we go. Let's get that Sherman. This one will be a 76, unlike the previous ones. Get whipped and nay nayed. That's what I like to hear. Alright. See how your machine gun team deals with this. Fuck out of there! All right, here we go. Actually, ninety fuel. This costs twenty fuel. I'm gonna wait. Let him have it. High explosive or white phosphorus? White phosphorus. Where's that Stug? He's got a Stug somewhere. You gotta watch out for that. Actually... Shit, shit, nope, nope. Face him. Come on, one more, one more. Ooh, one more shot. Will I get it? Nope, I'm dead. Oh, that is a gorgeous death animation for a tank, though. Holy crap. I like that. All right. I gotta get my head out of my ass. Cap these points. Okay. Specialized munitions. Thought I already grabbed that. No, I didn't. So I opted to wait to get a tank instead. Mortars. Mortars are up here, maybe? Oh, I won! Sick! Awesome! I actually beat this guy. I wasn't even watching the score at the end there, but I feel like if he was a little bit more aggressive and he didn't build base defenses like in the middle of the road 
and instead put it next to a victory point, that probably would have been better. Okay, so despite my army value being below his, I still won. So what that tells me is he was just underutilizing his troops. Okay. Uh, rifleman squad, and then vehicles. M4A1 Sherman medium tank. Yeah, 66% efficiency. It's not great. But, wow. Riflemen and scout squads, 143, 163. Yeah, it's the riflemen who win wars, not tanks. As much as I love my tanks. Alright, Mr. Ass. Oh, yeah, wow. His efficiency was terrible on these. What about his vehicles? Uh, his Stug 3 was 104% efficient. That was... See, this is a good vehicle. He did a good job with that, but... He just wasn't... He was underutilizing his forces. I think that's why he lost, but... That was fun. Yeah, average map control, 18.8%. I had 44.7%. Map control is everything in Company of Heroes. It is so important to have map control. That's why I was struggling so badly uh, in the other games, because I kept taking points and the enemy kept retaking it, and I was trying to muster something to push back, but I, I couldn't do it. But, uh, yeah, wow. Well... I think, I think that's going to be it for the Company of Heroes 3 multiplayer tech test. I had a lot of fun. I'm very much looking forward to this game when it comes out. I have it on pre-order. And we'll just have to see how we do. And that will be it.